Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Curly K Glam. I am here today to bring you Grownish episode four, thinking about you review. I had to take a 15 minute break to come out here to this car and deliver this review for y'all because <laughs> honestly, I just really feel some type of way. Um, let me just start off by saying, as y'all already know, I'm team Zuka. Um, but I'm going to talk about Aaron first so we can just go ahead and get the whole student loan situation out of the way. Um, hopefully I have good audio on this, um, phone because I'm trying to record my headphones in and I didn't want y'all to hear all the wind that's going on outside because it's extremely windy today. So hopefully this, um, comes out right and the audio is right. If not, I'm going to have to re-record. but, um, let's just start off by student loans. Um, I definitely felt Aaron on the student loans. I was watching um, people live tweet last night just so I can, you know, be in on the scoop. So, you know, I like to be prepared before I watch the episode um, each night. Well, the next day, because like I said, I always watch it the next day. So um, obviously, as we see, Aaron goes to the student. He goes to the um, financial aid office because, you know, typically before you do exit school, you have to sign these. It's not a contract, but it's called a master promissory note where you basically are promising to um, pay back all the money that was borrowed when you are attending a university. So as you know, um, they also do go to school in California. I live in North Carolina, so my school balance was never. <laughs> I owe nowhere. I probably owe like a a third, not a third, a fifth or a sixth of what Aaron's final balance was. But realistically speaking, um, sometimes when you go to these PWIs, um, and sometimes even if you go to private HBA, private HBCUs, the um, total amount for the student loan debt that people acquire is quite expensive. Um, I'm just going to speak on behalf of a black student attending a PB, a PWI, um, that wasn't the case for me, but I, I did have friends who attended um, my PWI from out of state. And um, my PWI, the first one before I transferred, because I left my original PWI and I transferred to another one. The first PWI I went to was a private school. And typically private schools are more expensive than public schools. It's not um, it's not discussed in the Grownish episode whether or not um, Cal U is a private or a public institution, but on behalf of me attending both, I'm going to speak from both because I attended a, um, a private PWI for the first, my first two years. And because I transferred, I ended up having to stay an extra year at my second PWI, which was a public school. But, um, for out of state students and, um, because I had some benefits at my private school, my first time, I didn't have to pay the full amount because I had, um, I guess it's kind of like a stipend. I had a benefit to where um, my mom's job, because she worked for an institution, that they would pay for 85% of my tuition. But I know for a fact that some schools on the East Coast cost $40,000 a year for people to go to. And if you don't have money and if you don't have scholarships and if you don't get, um, you know, Pell Grants and everything like that, by the time you graduate college, if your and, and tuition goes up every year. So by the time you finish 40K time four is 160. And depending upon how much the price fluctuate, you're looking at 160 between 160 to 180,000 dollars for some people who can't afford it. That's why it's a really big issue now for this generation on whether they decide if they want to go to school or not. Now, I'm not going to say I'm not pro-education because I am, and I believe that you should have an education in something. And if you don't attend a four-year institution that you need to go to um, a two-year institution or go to some kind of school and get a trade or pick up some type of um, skill, but it is it is difficult for a lot of people. Um, I'm not trying to put all my business out about school loans, but I definitely feel um, Aaron when paying that back because you looking at that amount and you're like, wow, like now I have to go out here and get a job. But of course they don't tackle like 
you know, beliefs and everything. Like, I believe God that I, he know that I owe this money. So obviously he's going to bless me in order to pay the money back and to pay it in full. Or that I'm praying for student loan forgiveness because that is the thing. Hallelujah. Like <laughs> student loan forgiveness. Like after 10 years, after you've been faithful and paying that, they will just forgive the rest. Um, I know a lot, the student loan forgiveness is also a thing that's real big right now in today's culture. But seeing as though they live in California, their prices for um, tuition are probably high. So, like, when they had that scene when um, Aaron and Vivek was playing the video games and Aaron was looking around and asking Vivek how much stuff costs. Obviously, y'all know Vivek is a street pharmacist. <laughs> He's a street pharmacist. And um, obviously, he has the money to have all this stuff in and. Um, they already dis discussed that Vivek was a genius, so I'm pretty sure Vivek is going to Cal U on some kind of scholarships. Also, because um, his parents are immigrants, so he probably got some type of benefit to go to Cal U. Um, but his thing is just making money while he's at Cal U. But obviously, Aaron questioned being a drug dealer for like five seconds. And like, I'm just like, Aaron, like, I understand, like, looking at $196,000, like, what are you like seriously what are you gonna do and a lot of people think that that price was um exaggerated but there is a lot of people who owe that much money in student loans just for undergrad and um it wasn't too long ago on um bet where they had this whole student loan debt conversation panel with angela Ra. and if you're not f familiar with angela angela Ra, you should look her up and um look it up on youtube because it was a very informative um it was a very informative discussion on student loan debt. And if you listen to a lot of the black kids who went to school, a lot of them owe a lot of money just for undergrad only. It's not even for going to grad school. And as we know, Aaron is the oldest out of all of them. So the student loan thing was definitely like a think piece. I think that was good that the grownish writers added that because that's something current that's currently going on with like this generation now. Like I said, I've been out of school I graduated in 2015, and so I can only imagine how much prices for tuition have increased in the last four to five years. Um, and so now we're going to get on to Zuka. Um, it was nice to see um, that Luca was able to express his feelings. I really like that because obviously from season one, we saw that Luca was definitely in love with Zoe. We definitely saw in season two that Luca and Zoe were definitely in love with each other, but because they're so young, they go through a lot of things in their relationships. And I'm not just, I'm not saying if you're not happy to stay in your relationship, to stay in your relationship if you're unhappy, because I'm definitely not promoting that. But also, um, a lot of things when we when we're in college and we're dating, we don't understand the fact that you're growing with somebody else. Somebody is growing and maturing, just like you're growing and maturing, and it's up to you to decide whether or not they're worth your time. I can say that now because I'm 28, but at Zoe's age, they're like 20, 21. They're juniors in college. Um, it's, it's definitely, you know, something to think about. It was also nice to see um, Jazz and Doug involved with um, Luca and help his decision. I thought it was funny that Jazz walked up on Luca and saw him texting Zoe. Luca obviously is still in love with Zoe, and obviously Zoe is still in love with Luca, and both of them have feelings to sort out now i saw a lot of people tweeting saying that they're so glad that this is the end of zuka i honestly don't feel like this is the end of zuka i feel like they're taking us on this love roller coaster for a reason because that's exactly how it is in college i'm not trying to compare them to Dwayne wayne and whitley but if you watch different world Dwayne wayne and whitley did the exact same thing it was the exact same thing and and um in different world Especially when I don't know if y'all remember this, but for all my different world fans, if y'all remember when Dwayne, sorry y'all, my camera cut off, but like I was saying, if y'all remember in a different world, when Dwayne Wayne went and did his internship overseas in Japan, he came back with a girlfriend named Kinu, and of course, him and Whitley had left on unfinished business. So basically, to me, Jillian is Kinu, and um, Zoe is Whitley, and of course, Luca is Dwayne, and it's just basically the same thing, it's a lot of the same thing. And so, um, hey, Kay here. I'm editing my video before I upload it for you guys tonight on YouTube. 
And I was watching and I got to the point in the video where we we're talking about um, the different world and um, Grownish comparisons. Obviously, there is a major difference between different world and Grownish, but to me, they have the same gist somewhat. So um, I was talking about Dwayne Wayne and Whitley and then... Of course, I know I recorded my video earlier today, but I got on Twitter and I saw somebody say the same thing. So then, um, of course, they were talking about when um, Dwayne Wayne interrupted Whitley's wedding because obviously he was still in love with her. Not saying that any of that is going to happen with Luca and um, Jillian. I mean, Luca and Zoe because it's probably not. Um, but also in a different world, um, I don't know if y'all remember this, but I think I was Whitley and Dwayne engaged at this time. I don't remember. Maybe they were just dating. But um I remember the they were starting to have um complications in their relationship and Dwayne actually started messing with another woman from another college. I think she might have been a grad student at another college as well. Don't like quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure because I binge watched A Different World not too long ago, and it is on Amazon Prime all six seasons. Um, I'm not sure if this was while Whitley and Dwayne were in graduate school or if they were in undergrad, but I don't think Dwayne physically did anything with the girl, unlike Luca, but he did like have a lot of entanglements with that woman, and then Whitley ended up finding out. But I just thought that was like a notable point to make because... It happens in college like when you're trying to figure out how you feel for someone you just you know do things and it and it just happens sometimes luca was definitely pressed to hit that text back from zoe and i think if he would have if he wouldn't have just questioned himself and just text her and just you know talk to her right after their encounter it would have been different opposed to him texting her and be like yo because i thought that it was real it wasn't thoughtless that he texted yo, but after going back and forth with yourself and questioning yourself and in your feelings and trying not to seem stupid and putting yourself out there, they were both questioning how each other felt. So it's just like, just go ahead and text her, Luca, stop. I mean, you feeling her, you in love with her, text her and see how she feels. Set up a time to talk because then obviously at the end of the episode, as y'all saw, they were outside talking. By then it was too late because both of them thought that it was too late to sit there and say how you feel after he got busted because at this point he feels like Zoe called me she don't want nothing to do with me but it shouldn't have had to go it shouldn't have had to get to that point had he just text her and they had a conversation off rip because they said it was three days now mind you in them three days it's not showing you that Luca has been with Jillian in those three days so I'm just going to assume in three days he has not been with Jillian now it's also been stated it has not been stated whether or not Luca and Jillian are officially an item, which I do not think they are. I think they're just uh, messing around, obviously, um, because obviously Luca was still in love with Zoe. And I feel like um, him going back and forth with his feelings, had Zoe text him and said, like, I'm ready. I still want you. I'm still in love with you. He would have dropped Jillian like a hot tamale. Like he would have dropped Jillian and went back to her. But because... She was in her feelings and she didn't know how he felt and he was in his feelings and he didn't know how she felt. Nothing was said. And so Luca basically went to Jillian and took his feelings out on Jillian. And it's sad to say, but he used Jillian and that's not cool. So I wonder if that's going to come back up in um, the later episodes of Grownish when Jillian, if Jillian finds out about Zoe, if she addresses Luca about that, because obviously I, I mean I'm not gonna say he didn't feel away toward Jillian but we know where his main feelings lie and you could tell not that Jillian was his side piece but he was just Jillian was just something for him to do sad to say because I didn't want them to use Ryan Destiny's character on Grownish as in something to do but obviously in the later episodes um Jillian and Zoe are going to become cool um just like everyone else my heart sank when um Zoe walked past that room and she was at the room and Luca walked back and walked across in the background. I was definitely not expecting for her to find out like that. I thought that they was going to be together and she was going to see a text message or something from Jillian asking Luca where he was at. But I just, I didn't feel like, I didn't feel like I knew that. And I, 
I felt like I had got cheated on. Like, no lie. I felt like I had got cheated on. I was like, dang, Zoe, bro. You had to find out like that. Luke and Luke, you can tell, like, on Luke's face, he didn't mean for her to find out like that. And you can obviously see that he still cares for her. But it's just, the situation is trash all the way around. Obviously, we know that in the later seasons, Zoe is going to go and mess with Aaron. So, I'm not sure what else is going to happen. But I'm just going to say from my predictions, um... Because of their black their backslidedness, I think that um Luca and Zoe are gonna end up dealing with each other again. I feel like this is not the end of Luca and Zoe. Everybody else thinks it is, but I don't think it is. Because in the later um promos, you saw um um Zoe go to Aaron and say, What can we do to fix this? And he was like, It's nothing you can do, it's too late. So I don't know if he was talking about his own situation or if um, he was talking about a situation with her with Luca. But I just wish that they would, like, pick a side and develop what it is. Even though, like, they hit it, they hit it spot on, like, with girls and guys going back and forth with relationships in college. It's, it's spot on. Like, it happens. It truly happens. Um, like I can say again, I don't feel like the whole thing with Luca and Zoe is over. I feel like... Um, I definitely feel like Zoe is somebody is going to get pregnant and between um, uh, somebody else. I feel like somebody else is going to get pregnant and I think it's going to be Zoe and I think it's going to be Lucas baby. But um, we're going to see what's going to happen because in the next couple episodes, um, they're going to throw Nomi a baby shower and stuff. And then we're going to see what T um, Sky finds out about um, Rodney. So just stay tuned. I think, you know, my anticipation for the episodes coming are over now because they're about to pipe down the Luca and Zoe um, storyline and start focusing on everybody else. But we're going to see how it go because definitely in another promo, um, when Zoe meets up with Saweetie, Saweetie asks Zoe, does she have a boo? And Zoe says yes. So what are y'all thoughts on tonight's episode? Just let me know. Um, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Curly K Glam. And I'll be back with more videos. Deuces.